straightforward farming. News and comment brought to you by FTFB. Now, straightforward farming. Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Straightforward Farming Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Reed, alongside Nick McCormick, sitting here in the new, freshly revamped FTFB studios. What do you think of the new studio, Nick? <laughs> looks you, nice. You like looks it? Looks nice. I brought a couple things. Don't let me forget to grab them out of the truck. I brought a couple ah, things for you. Perfect. I've got a few things in the mail now, a few hats, a couple shirts and different stuff. People, I think, wanted to put up on the wall. And uh, So i got to ask, do we just try to keep plastering layer upon layer or do we like so we got like a gleaner shirt back here in the corner do we take it down and replace it what are well, we gonna do i here? don't know we'll have to, it'll be so well insulated here before too much longer we won't even be able to hear ourselves <laughs> yeah i'm just glad to finally have carpet under our feet my toes nice. don't freeze it is nice. just in time for spring exactly exactly <laughs> we froze all winter and yeah. now we finally revamped it for spring but yep so so what's going on in your world this week I've uh, just been working at the shop, getting ready for spring here. Um, did a little bit of cleaning here the last couple of days. Things were starting to stack up as, as they usually do in a shop and get that back to cleaned up. And the kids got a little time off here. So I uh, drug them into a little nice slave labor and, and uh, so they can learn a few things. Got Max uh, drug into the skid loader, letting him run that a little bit as he can haul stuff off and move stuff around and whatnot, get him a little experience in that. And so that went well. And I really think we need to coordinate this. When the kids have school break, either you get all the kids, yours and mine included, or I get them all. Because, like, none of our machinery got cleaned up last fall because fall drug clearing oh, in yeah. December. Nothing got worse. So I got a whole bunch of washing they can all do. So we're going to have to coordinate this to where we can – no you know, doubt, no doubt. Last time I tried to have my son pressure wash stuff, though, when he hit the nozzle, about blew him over. <laughs> so, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got to, yeah, but you're right on that. I, we both get quality work out of each other's kids. I know. When they work for us. So or, yeah, we can even do that, just trade together. kids. You don't have to have them all. We just trade well, kids. Well, we can, yeah. we'll put them all in a crew, <laughs> but uh, they get along when they're all together. It seems like we, we get better productivity out of them yeah for sure but yeah i got stuff that's got to get washed i've like my plant and tractor filthy dirty the planter is spotless but the tractor itself is dirty as hell and if your washing goes like mine does you got to unhook the planter to wash the tractor because otherwise you're just going to keep blowing the shit from back one and to forth. the other yep so i gotta unhook we refuse to unhook anything at our farm tony so i, I can't do that but well, uh, the planter tractor's clean the planter's clean the really the only thing that's got to get washed yet is the, the combines could they're they're clean ish that's exactly what i did just got the but big not, chunks but, off. but they're not waxed i would like for that to happen now that i see all this ceramic coating i really want to dive into that path i'm the same way i have, have you had any actual real experience with that i, I all I i've seen not. is from tiktok I I, I, that's all i've seen is from tiktok and uh, red power stew's brother uh, kurt or whatever i i ha- i saw his stuff and i keep getting all this next gen next gen stuff flashed up on my tiktok but it doesn't look like it's a very multi-step process, and maybe that's fine. I don't know. I don't know enough about it. I'm looking into it. I haven't dived down that the, path the, yet. The bad part about the the ceramic coating, I guess in order to do it right, you know, I mean, these guys are getting the tractor completely spotless, you know, fenders and everything before they do this, and it's like, man, that just seems like a lot of work, which I guess – I, I guess I want it to be worth it if I'm going to go to that much trouble and then put this stuff on that I don't want it to be. And I think it probably is worth it in the long run. But you got to have a spot where you can park it for three, four days where you can do, you know, a couple hours here and then let, right. it, let it set and then do a couple more hours later on. And so you got to coordinate all that. And I, I'm slowly inching towards having the space to do that. But yeah, somebody got a hell of a deal. That was probably at the very start of winter. I seen one of them companies on TikTok yeah. that said they had to have a shop for like maybe six pieces of equipment or whatever Something it was like to that, put yeah. on a training session. And basically you got it for half price yeah. or whatever the deal was, which was a hell of a deal. Yeah. But I don't have a shop big enough to get six pieces in. So yeah, I was exactly. out. <laughs> but, yeah, but I can it, do that if I drag everything outside. Yeah, yeah. That, that didn't work out very well. But it looks like it really works nice from what I've seen, but... I guess I don't want to be disappointed, go to all that trouble and all that money, and then it's like, well, it's basically just a glorified wax job, and in six months it's gone. So I was at a, a guy's deal the other day when I was picking up some planter stuff, 
and uh, he showed me a tractor that, that they had done last summer that they hadn't got cleaned up because Paul ran so late or whatever. He's like, all we did was hit with the leaf blower, and it was immaculate. And they were doing a quad track at the time really? in the in the main shop. So I, just from that minimal experience, it looks like it's worth it. I wonder how that handles like road oil. You know, we get so much road oil around here. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm, I gotta think it helps making it come off easier. But as soon as you spray something that will take road oil off, you probably just lost your ceramic. Right, would be my guess. That's the bad part. Which I haven't took road oil off our tractors for probably two years and they're not covered because you know in the dead heat yeah. of summer you know we're not moving them up and down the road by then yeah. you know we're not doing the wheat gig and the double crop beans and whatnot and usually the hood stay you know luckily things are covered enough now you don't throw shit yeah. all over the hood like you used to when we were kids but yeah i've just wondered how how road oil I, I have found on road oil that i think it's 3m adhesive remover works about as good as anything oh really Spray i've always it. just stuck with diesel fuel I, so my I, wife had a white car and I don't know where she was going. I have quizzed her about a thousand times. Her car would come home dripping with oil. I'm like, I, I travel the same roads as you do. This yeah. is back before we moved. I'm like, how, how are you getting so much road oil on your car? But that 3M adhesive remover works well on that. You okay. kind of hose it down. It'll more or less run off of there and wipe it down, and you're good. Yep. It works well. Yep. Which, does some of these ceramic guys, are they charging by the hour, by the piece? What do they? You do? know, I'm not really sure. I'm not either. The, the little bit of quote I've had on that was a, was a range, depending on how much buffing they had to do. I yeah. think it depends on how many water spots you've got and yeah. if the paint needs any work to begin with. Yeah, so I guess for the listener's benefit, when you go to ceramic coat something, first and foremost, they're going to get the tractor in immaculate shape. Yes. Because basically you're just sealing over whatever, whatever that tractor, like if you just go up to the tractor now that's all faded and ceramic coated, you're locked into yeah. being faded. It, it looks like to me it's that, a clear that, they, that they wash it you know as best they can yeah and then they clay bar it and then they go from there they buff a little they put the ceramic coat on it's a, it's a multi-stage process it is but, amazing when you see the guys that do that and then literally take a garden hose and i mean the water runs off i mean it's great i mean it's to the 10th power of what wax does yeah. I mean, it's just nuts yeah it looks like it really works nice but yeah i would think you'd have a lot of time and elbow grease in doing a tractor I mean, i'm going to start small we're yeah. going to start small. I'm going to start on something smaller and then work my way up to the combines and the four-wheel right. drives. And if the wife but. hadn't ripped the hood off the old lawnmower, we'd have started there. <laughs> yeah. Very small, but yeah. can't do that. So, <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. Like I said, most of my stuff's ready to go. i got a couple little things to do, and then I think we're pretty well ready to go. So Yeah, same here. Everything's ready. Just needs cleaned up, But which all the implements are clean. It's just the tractors didn't get cleaned. So I don't know. Uh, hopefully, we'll get a window here. I, I'm scared we're going to go from 50 degrees to 80 degrees. Yeah. You know, we're going to miss spring, just go from winter to summer, and then it's... Yeah, you're going to go in, time, and you know, right. you're like, going to get like, dirty at, anyway. You know, we so. had an inch and four-tenths of rain yesterday, and everything was almost great off today because we had 40-mile-an-hour yeah. winds and sun all day. Yeah. So what we think could be a couple weeks of being out of the field could actually turn into just a few days if it keeps this up. Yeah. Know? And, I mean, if, if the forecast turns out to be warm, like... I'm pretty well ready to go. I don't have much anhydrous to put on. Right. So here. really, I can start working ground and planting yeah. the same day if if weather allows. So we're behind, but we're not really behind yet. Right. So. That's how we are. We got 200 acres. I'm not hooking up to, to a bar for that. We're going to have them custom apply it. So, yeah, same here. When the weather breaks, start planting. Hopefully, don't catch the anhydrous applicator. Yeah. But And I don't know what my cutoff will be. Generally, rule of thumb is, you know, always plant beans first, but you get to about the 9th of May, then you better get your corn planted. I might back that up to the 1st of May. If I'm not planting by the 1st of May, start out on corn just because we always dry corn in the fall. Yeah. You know, propane's over $2 a gallon now. Yeah. And it's like, I really need corn to be dryish, probably as dry as I can get it. I mean, I don't want to sacrifice 8 or 10 bushel of soybean yield which i don't think as time drags on here i don't yeah. think you're looking at that much yield difference. No. you know and you never know what the summer will bring on weather wise or whatnot you know if it corn and soybeans don't essentially like the exact same weather pattern so right. you know you could get that soybean yield back pretty easy depending yeah. on the weather pattern so you know corn's always been kind of a, a baby it, it likes no stress hardly yeah. at all from start to finish beans they like stress. They like yeah, to be smacked around. Yeah, they like to get mad. Yeah. yeah. So 
I don't know. We'll just have to see what happens here. But, you know, over, well, it was a, uh, April 8th last year, we started planting. And, you know, we're getting yeah. well past that now. So, and the forecasts don't look all that great. I'm not saying it's horrible, but it. It's not awesome. It's not no. favorable. I mean, yeah. I'd be a little leery to have crops in the ground right now. Yeah, I, mean, I don't want them in the ground yet. I did plant my whole garden, but if I lose that, I'm out five bucks, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah. And it sets on a high clay knob. You know, I think I'll be okay there, but yeah, I don't know. It, I know we work our things a little bit different since we plant corn and beans basically at the same time. Like, I'll work ground through the day to keep the corn planter going, and then I'll plant beans at night. And then start over again the next day. So we'll do them both at the same time, basically. So once it gets dry enough to go, we'll, I mean, essentially, I think I've got it down. If I could, if I could stay up that long, I think I could do all my beans in 24 hours. Yeah. If I could run that hard, I can't do that because I'm not young anymore. But two and a half, three days, I can essentially, if it was clean, good running, which never happens, but in theory, I, yeah. can, I can do it. So, yeah. <clears throat> No, every year's different. It's I'm ready to get started, get it in. You know, prices are high. I I, I, I have a hard time selling stuff before it's out of the planter. Yeah, I'm. Mm. I don't know. I'm thirteen percent sold, and I'm talking average. You know, fifty five bushel yeah. beans, hundred sixty bushel corn. I'm like thirteen percent sold on beans, and like six percent sold on corn. Yeah. So I, I sell a little bit, but I want to. I would like to, in a perfect world probably won't happen but i would like to be 40 percent sold on each before the planter moves but yeah. i don't think i'll be there but i i think this ground this year is beat down so much from all the rain we're gonna have to open it up to get it to dry I, i'd say you're right it's gonna have that it's, crust on it's gonna have that yep, film it's not yep, gonna dry. it's not gonna be one of them deals where it's great off looking good hit it got a little bit of dirt work to do on dragging stuff around from gullies you know once it, we got that fall and it was thawing from underneath and it was raining on top of it yeah, it's pretty easy to wash on the hillsides or whatever. We got stuff to do there, and so I don't know. I think you're right. We'll have to crack it open, let it air a little bit, get some oxygen back in the soil. Be interesting to see how the ground works because, you know, we did have a, a long cold stretch, which usually makes the ground work pretty nice. Right. But then we've had all these rains, and it's it's kind of weird now. Like I've never seen it this soft. Like you're driving down a yeah. country road now, you just hit a soft spot about dragging in the ditch. Yeah, I so. I think my gut tells me I think the ground's going to work really nice. But the thing that's going to bite us is looking out now, things are starting to really green up. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of green coming on. And normally on like corn stalks here south of my house that have been chiseled, you know, you wouldn't start getting green to the degree that we've got it now for another 30 days. No. But the weird part is, is I think, you know, we had that warm up two weeks ago, whatever it was, that spurred everything. Yeah. But now it's it's all kind of set in there dormant. But as soon as we get some heat, I think it's really going to take off where... Normally, you wouldn't even see green for, you know, until no. the first week of May or first two weeks of May. So. Yeah. Well, nothing makes a prettier deal than when you get a bunch of yellow mustard growing out in your corn stalks. Yep. Two foot tall. Yeah. Yeah. I know, you know, things had got high enough this year. And and what's your thoughts? Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, and I, I don't mean this to sound bad or, or, you know, I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way. But, you know, I'm starting to see all these things on TikTok that, oh, you know, inputs are so high and people ain't going to plant this and that. I don't know about you, but right now I can sell corn off the combine for like 704. I'm going to be planting fence row to fence row because even on a 160 bushel corn crop, because you and I got our inputs bought double of last year, but still half of this year. Yeah. Uh, at an average crop, we're going to make good money. It, yeah, but yes, we are. We we have, there's the potential for that. That's like a buddy of mine told me. He's like, well, I'm I'm looking for 23. Like, yeah, that's the unknown. If the trend keeps going, do I have to have 10 dollar corn to yeah to so I can afford to put a crop out in 23? Or is this my last year? You yeah. know, he's like, you know, if there's a huge deficit there, and that's the unknown. You don't know. It's like right now the prices, in theory, are good, but do they pencil out? with today's impi- inputs or higher inputs yeah that's yet and, to be seen of course that's farming in general like right. if, I had a, if i knew all that i wouldn't farm i'd just buy and sell paper yeah and so and maybe i'm wrong i mean you tell me i i look at every year based on that year so i've got this much in the 2022 crop and i'm going to get this much for it so i consider 2022 a good year yeah 
Now, granted, we don't know what 23 is going to bring. You've got to save money from 2022 to put out the 23 crop, but how far does that go? Do I say, well, you know, 2022 is a good year, but, you know, by 2036, I'm going to need this much. Well, you can't, yeah. you you know, you, there's a balance in there. You there can't. is a balance in there, and some of it depends on how you're doing your accounting, right? Like, right. You know, there's different ways to do that, right? And so that can affect that drastically on on which way you're going on that. So. Yeah, and and we're fortunate, you know, here where we farm. I mean, there's a lot of variables that pe- other people have to put up with that we don't have to. You know, irrigation. Yeah, you, know, I mean, you can wrap up a lot of money right there yes. that we don't have to mess with. And thankfully, we were were able to put our anhydrous on in the fall. A lot of guys yeah. couldn't do that. Yeah. You know, you're married to the spring price. Yeah. So, you know, we got we got lucky there. I mean, I'm not going to yeah. deny that fact. But um, I these guys, and I even hear local guys, you know, that are, I don't know if whining is the right word, that, you know, I don't know how we're going to make any money. It's like, well, I don't know if you've run the numbers or not, but from the numbers that I've run, just basing 22 on 22, there's a lot of money on the table to be made. Well, if they did, but if they didn't buy their inputs in a timely manner, that's going to be pretty tight. Yeah, you know. But uh, getting them bought early was definitely beneficial this year, or it looks like it's going to be. And I really think now, come into twenty twenty two by June first, I think you're going to see fertilizer suppliers out with prices for fall that says we want to check right now yeah. to lock in, you know, X price. Yeah, I'd say you're right. And whether it's going to go up or down, we don't know. They don't know, but I, it's you know, just going to be a marketing a slippery deal. slippery slope. You know, it wasn't all that long ago, you were, if you'll remember, the retailers around here would apply for free in fall. There was no application fee because we're just trying to get a little bit done. Get ahead of the so, curve. Yep. So that we don't have all this workload in the spring and then uh, get enough people to switch. And then now you know, there's a fall charge, but it's not as high as the spring. And then... When we get enough people switched, now now there's the same charge as spring, and now you got to pay for it. You know, we got to book that in the spring for fall, and it's like pretty soon we're going to be farming for 2025 and 2022. Like, yeah. you know, how much longer do we go before we're buying two or three years out on inputs or whatever? And I, I don't know about you, but I ain't got the cash for that. I mean, you know? if you went to the elevator and said, "Hey, I'll take uh, seven dollar corn now for 2024," and just go ahead and write me the check, by the way, yeah, do you think exactly. they'll do that? No, I don't think they will. So, why do you get to do that with the suppliers? Mm-hmm. You know, hey, we're going to go ahead and lock in your fertilizer for next spring, and we're going to need yeah. you to pay for that now. Yeah. Well, why don't it go the other way then? Exactly. So, and by the way, I need a ten dollar an acre or ten dollar bushel technology fee because I'm growing yeah. some pretty next level shit. Yeah. Yeah, they're not gonna they're not gonna do that. Yeah. Yeah. It. Uh, it's a mess from that standpoint. But I mean, that's farming. It's always been a lot of speculation and a lot of hope and luck and dreams. And yeah, I hope it goes I, your way. I look at everything, and I'm not saying I'm right. Don't don't misunderstand it. I look at everything from a risk management standpoint. Yeah. I can tell you down to the penny what it costs me to grow a bushel of corn. And once I see that, okay, there's pretty good profit in this right now, I start selling a little. You know, right now I've just been on the habit of selling a thousand bushel a week. Because I'm, I'm going to have to have a lot of money in the fall to meet cash yeah. rent, different stuff. So I'm going to sell up to cover all of that. And then the rest could be gambling stocks unless it goes aggressively higher and looks like it may not stay there. Then I may get real aggressive. But Like a good friend of mine always tells me, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. Yep. So you can hang out for that higher, the highest price on the market. And if you miss it, you get slaughtered. Right. But if you, can, if you can make money all the way along, you're not going to go broke making money. Right. It's mathematically impossible to go broke selling at a profit. Exactly. You can run them numbers however you want, but yeah. it's mathematically impossible. But when, so, you hang, when you hold out for the for the peak, which if you knew the peak, you wouldn't farm. Exactly. You'd sell paper. You right. know, so. I mean, it's honestly getting to the point that if you can sell corn for $7.50 off the combine, Okay, so let, let's pretend that it, it goes to eight bucks. I don't know. We don't know if it's going to go. Would you even mess with putting corn in a bin? It's like just take the shit yeah. straight to town, and you didn't even fool with it, and you still made good money. Okay, yeah. fine. I might have missed out on 50 cents, but. And it didn't spoil. You didn't have to move it. You didn't wear your augers out, all that stuff. There's cost associated with all that. You that 40-20 right. on the auger ain't running for free. I mean, even though it is the greatest tractor ever made, right. it still does not run for free. Right. And the, I, I hear this so often from people that, and this, this never comes from farmers, but it comes from city people or people that are a little bit disconnected from the farm. They act like that, oh, yeah, you got bins, you know. I mean, hell, you know, you just made 50 cents a bushel. And it's like, yeah, you can lose 50 cents a bushel by putting it in the bin, too. Yeah, you're not it goes guaranteed, both ways. Yeah, you're not just guaranteed ways. that you made more money by putting it in the bin. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's for sure. You handled it a bunch, but you not might not have made any extra yeah. money. Now you know we always have to fill the bins for the harvesties. We're not setting in two hour yeah. lines during harvest. We're just yeah. not. That's why we got so much storage. Uh, okay. But I, I'm not saying I can't sell it for December or whatever. Yeah. But I guess our point is is once you fill the bins, there's always a little bit of carry from fall yeah. to Jan. So you might as well sell it for Jan. Yeah. Since you've already filled them, I mean, the work's already done, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure it'll be status quo like always, but it is very tempting. In, in a perfect world, if there was no elevator lines, it's like yeah. at what point in time you just take it to town and be done with it. Be you done know? with it. I don't know. It amazes me the spread in the market. I was talking to a buddy of mine from Ohio yesterday, and I think he could get seven ninety for corn yesterday. Yeah. Wasn't seven ninety here? Nope. Last I looked today, and I didn't look at the close. It was seven seventy three or four. For nearby corn, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. We're, in fact, yeah. yeah, I got uh, two guys just south of here, good friends. They're hour and a half south of me, and their bid down there was eight bucks. Yeah. And because they said their basis went to, I don't, 15 over. I forget well, I forget what the spread was, whatever, but it wasn't anywhere near what ours is. No. I mean, so. we're, we're not in a very good spot from a marketing standpoint. No. We're too far away from anything good. There's no ethanol plants. There's no chicken plants. There's right. we're too far from the river. ADM yeah. and Staley's in Decatur. I've got the market corn. All the corn is going yeah. there, and they don't have to bid up. No, they don't have I to mean, bid up for it. They're, and they don't they don't put anything in their bins. They want to process it as they deliver it. Yep. So you basically set in a line. You dump it. They process it. They don't even put it in the bin. Right. You know? So, yeah, we're not in a good spot from from a marketing standpoint. Yeah, I don't know where. I mean, I, they might make a little bit of ethanol in Decatur. I don't know. Outside of that, if if they do. Where would the next ethanol plant be that's close to us? I couldn't even tell you. Not the, close enough to us to, to make a difference for you and I? No. I mean, yeah. It seems like I a lot of them I hear about are in Nebraska, Iowa, you know, different yeah. places like that, but I don't know of any. They're, they're not close to here. No. 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 <clears throat> Which makes a big difference. Like I said, we're just far enough from the river. Like, you can truck it there and gain a little, but not enough to justify trucking it there. if you got a consistent backhaul it's even better but yeah them are pretty hit and miss yes you know if you need fertilizer or lime got a way to store it etc you can right. kind of sort of do that but then if you're doing that with the hopper bottom there's some logistics you know involved in that to unload it etc right. pile it so i mean i don't know about other areas of the midwest but i mean around here realistically you got to farm what Seven, eight, nine thousand acres before you're applying your own fertilizer. I'm not saying there ain't a guy that's smaller than that that's maybe doing it, but you know, to be consistently to haul that much grain there's, to St. Louis, there's to not there's not a ton of it. No, there's no. not very many guys doing and it. And it seems like nowadays a lot of the co-ops have got big enough with their own fleet of trucks that they're yeah. hauling their own grain down and their own fertilizer back. Yeah. So you're, you know, you're not really ga- gaining all of that back haul. And from what I've from what I've gathered, we're probably spoiled and blessed. In the ag retailers that we have here, co-ops, et cetera, they're above average from, yeah. from what I've gathered on on their ability to get product, apply product, et cetera, et cetera. Like, so we're a little spoiled on that. We probably take it a little bit for granted. Now, don't get all puffy-chested from the guys that are from our local area that are in those deals. <laughs> but, right. But, uh, you know, not everybody has probably as good of retailers as we do on that. So, yeah. From from a getting product and putting it on standpoint and the costs associated with that, so some some places are far enough removed from that that they they have to b- apply their own fertilizer, or yeah. have to go get their own fertilizer, or their own this because it, it's just not yeah. effective or dependable to get it from the retailer. The retailers aren't the size of some of ours, yeah. So some of that plays into it. Too. I mean, you can vouch for this. I'm going to say, 15 years ago, virtually nobody around here sprayed their own. I mean, virtually yeah. nobody. I mean, back no, then. hardly anybody. And they still, the co-ops managed to keep up with all of it. Yeah. And I'm going to say now, it's what, 50% at best to spray their own? I mean, we don't. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's probably it's probably less than 50%. Right. Yeah. And so, we do have, for the most part, Cadillac co-ops. They got yeah. lots of help, lots of big machinery. Yeah. And when it's go they, time. They were early adopters on a bunch of the, of yeah. the big sprayers, et cetera. Because I remember years ago talking to 
friends of yours in college. Yes. Yep. And they were just dumbfounded. Just mesmerized by the size of our one co-op, which was local. I mean, started in our hometown. Yeah. And a, a town just south of us, yeah, their first two branches. And they had way more equipment than anything they had in flat black. Yeah. Here's a bell. Good spring country. Like there's no trees to go around. There's no, there's no twenties, forties and eighties. It was one sixties, two thirties, you know, et yeah, cetera. Back, back then, you know, it's like up there, they had like two interrogators with 60 foot booms and yeah. maybe one spinner truck. And down here, it's like, okay, they got six John Deere 4,700s and yeah. three interrogators and then two yeah. more of a dry boxes and then a couple pickup trucks. I mean, they yeah, had like they a had, whole they fleet. Had it all, whole, whole fleet. And that was just the one retailer. Yeah. You know, I, I remember that conversation. I remember right where we were at. We were at Legends at the bar shooting pool when we were having that conversation. I remember that vividly. And, um, yeah, it was just – so we're, we are spoiled in that regard yeah. for sure. Yeah. it's. I've said it a hundred times. Where we are at, it truly is one of the easiest places to farm. There's no irrigation. There's no rocks. Everything's pretty flat and square. Pretty good soil for the most part. Yeah. It's – 20 miles north of here would be even better, but yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 But the grass is always greener. You know? <laughs> it is. Yeah, for sure. You know, there's, there's some factors up there too. Their cash rents higher. They're, it's a little more cutthroat, a lot more bank managed ground. Taxes are higher. I mean. Taxes yeah. are higher. There, there's a lot of, everybody's got their own deal. Yeah, you know? for sure. But the other flip side to that is, is where we're at right now, not saying it couldn't change, but there is zero diversification where we're at yes it is corn and soybeans and that is it that is that you get a guy that raised 100 head of cattle he might have a patch of wheat but yeah patch of wheat because he needs 20 straw bales right other than yeah. that it is corn and soybeans as far as you can see, see yeah there's no you know when i was a kid we had wheat we had milo milo what a miserable crop. oh god <sighs> i cut enough of that when i was on wheat harvest crew that i don't ever goodness we again. don't do that anymore you know but that was normal i don't know oh, if you had milo around here now i don't know where you'd sell it you have to take it to St. Louis. I mean, no, none of the elevators around here take it. No, they wouldn't even consider it. No, um, but yeah, we're not very well diversified when it comes to that. If the corn and soybean market tanks, you got nothing. Yeah, literally nothing. <laughs> literally nothing. <laughs> yeah. So that is, and I don't know how far you got to go to get into stuff that's maybe a little more diversified. I mean, I know even like out Chuck Weldon's way, you know, clear out in Western Missouri, that's all pretty much corn and soybean, a little pretty bit much. of wheat. A little there bit of wheat, too, but. you know, but it seems like you had to go south and north, both. There's yeah. like a, there's like a latitude in here, yeah, from, from Indiana to Colorado that's just corn and soybeans, yeah, and then north of that and south of that. You know, we we can grow okay wheat, we can't grow great wheat, just good enough to almost make you want to do it, but not good enough to be profitable. You go south of here, not that far. You don't have to go probably twenty thirty miles, and the wheat crop gets way better. And we're just a little too far north for, for good wheat, in my opinion, and or at least good double crop beans to follow them. And, uh, I mean, like I said, when we, when we were kids, nobody north of here grew wheat. Oh, God, no. They didn't even know what it was. But now they grow a fair amount of wheat north of here. Um, but they didn't They didn't even like soybeans then either. I mean, it was all corn on corn. They grew soybeans because, you know, they ran out of time to plant corn. Yeah. Well, now their soybean crop has got a lot better, and they backed way off the corn on corn stuff. Yeah. which I wish they'd go back the other way because I like soybeans, but whatever. And even when he was kids, oh, they didn't dream about, or I'm going to put it this way, you didn't hear about it. I'm sure it happened, but they didn't dream about raising corn in North Dakota back no. then. They they just didn't. I mean. And maybe I'm wrong here, but once corn got high the the first time in there, where, wherever it blew past four to whatever, there's a lot of places that grew corn. Like Chuck Weldon's way, a lot of those cow pastures got tore up. CRP, et cetera, and they got planted corn. You go down south, stuff they didn't yeah. grow corn in before, got switched to row crop. A lot of farms that shouldn't be row cropped, especially I, I know several out Chuck Weldon's way west of him that really shouldn't be in corn, but now they're out and they're, they're row cropping them now. They really ought to be cattle pastures, but people don't grow cattle that way anymore. Yeah. Or there are still people that grow that. I mean, we've got a it's the, back back pedal a little bit, but on but, a large scale, there's not as many people that are pasturing. There, there's doing more. We'll call them confinement or you right. know, high rise. Th- those areas field. have shifted. You know, the guys around here, you don't raise them on pasture anymore. You let somebody three yeah. states away have yeah. the calves on pasture, then you bring them into your feed lot that's here. As I remember, I went out to a buddy of mine west of him. Oh, it's been 
gosh, 10 years ago or so, we were cruising around. He was showing me this, that, and I said, I don't understand what you guys are doing here. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, it looks like to me you're growing corn and soybeans on ground that is okay, but you've got cows down on flat ground that looks better. And he's like, well, it's because there's rock underneath it or this, that, and the other. Well, now you go out there. A bunch of that stuff's been tore up, and it's being row crop now, but it really shouldn't be, you know. But some of that plays into the CRP program and different things. Once corn gets high, they're putting it in every nook and cranny they can find it, you know. Yeah, and that's what I mean when you go back to these TikTok videos, and I think the vast majority of it is people who obviously don't farm, but and it didn't help with all the stupid-ass videos that we put out last summer about destroying (laughs) crops, but... You know, they just act like that nobody's going to plant this year because inputs are so high. But you're not looking at the other side of the equation. Yeah. The price of corn is very high, too. Yeah. So it's all coming up proportionately. You're going to plant it. Farmers are... Exactly. I don't mean to be mean, but they're dumb. They're going to plant it regardless. They have no choice. What are you going to do? Let it sit idle and just pay your cash rent anyway? Like, yeah. you, you can't do that. you got to at least make an attempt at it yeah. and hope it works out. So it's going to get planted. But what always cracks me up is, like, the government always acts like these reports are just news to them too they didn't know i'm like you guys have every number how many people yeah. do you know that are not in a farm prank not program enough, of not enough fashion? to sway the numbers not enough to sway the numbers like they know yeah now they might skew them or misinform or whatever to manipulate one way or the other but they know somebody right. knows might not be them but somebody knows and i've always said too it don't matter what you and i report for the most part why can't they just call cortiva monsanto all or bear now yeah. Well, how many bags of corn did you sell? And they're going to get a rough idea. They're yeah. going to know that most guys are planting from thirty to thirty six thousand, roughly. Mm-hmm. You're going to get close. Yeah, you know? they're going to have a pretty good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And really, what good does reports do? To me, all that all that is there for is to swing the price, ain't it? Profit taking. Yeah. Does, does it matter to you how many acres of corn? Because in our operation, we never ever switch acres based on price unless. I'm not saying three years from now there couldn't be a huge deal where corn was ten dollars a bushel and beans were three dollars a bushel. That might make you sway, but year yeah. in and year out we're not chasing it. Our, not chasing our soil it doesn't handle yeah. that because now I'm screwed into beans for three years on one farm because it was beans on beans. Well, now I got to get my rotation back yeah. cut in. You know, and it, so my, my dad always talks about that. We should switch this. We should do that. He would never actually do that. I think he just likes to poke my brother and I on that. But I'm like. We're not switching. It's going to be basically 50-50. I'm not switching one to the other unless it's a drastic skew. It's going to have to be a big number one way or the other. I'm just going to – because like you said, the next year, you're up a creek, you know, without a paddle. So, But when it comes to the reports, let's let's just pretend tomorrow you walk into Walmart and you're going to buy a desktop computer. Do you pull up on your phone? Well, I got to get a report on what desktop computers are doing. You know how many of the, how many they sold? How many have they made? What are we doing here? Yeah. No, you just buy. No, it. You just buy it. So if you're raising hogs, and yeah. the hogs need to eat today, guess what? You're just going to go buy the corn. Yeah, exactly. The report don't mean shit. All that is is for somebody to trade the numbers back and forth. It has nothing to do with price discovery. Nothing. It don't. I, I'm sorry, but it don't. I'm going to go back to our previous podcast where we talked about uh, movies and whatnot, and I'm going to quote a movie that I can't believe I forgot. Uh, the last Boy Scout. Why is there an injury report in pro football? So the bookies know how to cover the spread. That's right. <laughs> That's the same reason exactly. that, there's, that there's crop reports, so that the bookies know how to cover the spread. Right. That's, That's all, all it, comes it is. Down to. That's it's all it profit, is. Because profit taking. let's let's look all through the summer. So we start getting our crop condition report. You know, corn's fifty eight percent good, to excellent, blah blah blah. But it don't mean a hill of shit until they get the final yield number in the fall, yeah. right? Yeah, it, it don't matter. They one can, windstorm can look at the Iowa a couple of years yeah. ago. One windstorm changes all that. Right, and then we've all seen years where there was only twenty percent good to excellent, but then come fall, you know, the national average was a hundred and sixty-one bushel. Well, how mm-hmm. the hell did that happen? Yeah, how did it get better after it was bad? Yeah. How did it miraculously recover like right. Lazarus, and then it's good? Right. Yeah, I've I've heard different stories, and you know whether you want to call them conspiracy theories, whatever, over the years, like. You know, when they had the USDA reports, it's it's all locked down, and there's only, you know, eight people allowed in that room, and, you know, supposedly all on the up and up. But, you know, you always hear these different conspiracy theories that, you know, the one guy walks in the room, and, you know, he pulls the blind down halfway, and that's signaling to the guy across the street that, the <laughs> you know, it's going to yeah. be up or down on the report, you know. And yeah. You, you can't tell me that if you are not in a position of power and know that you're not going to get prosecuted because we're all in this together. Yeah. 
that you're not going to rake a whole shitload off the top of this deal when you have the report in your hand. There is no, you cannot tell me that. I'm telling you. It It sure seems that that would be the case, yes. But what do I know? Yeah. They're not not listening on that. Yeah, it's all about, it's all about money and they got it and we don't and they're in control of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, but I just don't think crop reports really have a whole lot of merit to them. No. (laughs) To be honest with you. Well, it seems like if they swing one way, they swing the other. It's just also money could be made, Yeah, you know, by the players in the game, you know. And that was what, uh, 2019, that was a year it was extremely wet nationwide. I mean, horrible wet. And... You know, there was prevent plant to the hilt that year, and and it was legit. I mean, there really was. But they come out and like, oh, well, we were actually, we were going to plant 105 million acres of corn, which, you know, was off the charts high. Yeah. So we actually still got it all planted because we were actually only projected, you know, 94 million acres. or Meanwhile, there was field after field that wasn't planted. Yeah. yeah. And so that's all they do is they just shuffle the number from this column to this column to make it work out. And and so it don't mean shit to me. But we've always laughed, too, that when do you get to close a year out? Because you can yeah. be rolling along in this crop report just fine. Everything's hunky-dory, and it looks like the market's going to stay flat. And then all it wants to re- release a report, well, the 2020 crop was four bushels less than what yeah. we thought it was. It's like, yeah, two years later, I yeah. mean, can we just go back now and say, well, the 1967 corn crop was half of what we thought yeah. it was. So, you, I mean, like, where do we close the year Like out? my wife will tell you, Tony, there's lies, damn lies, and statistics. Exactly. And you, the numbers never lie, but... Liars have numbers, right. so you know you can make them show whatever you want them to show. Right. If you need I, them to show. I would love to play this game with the IRS after I file my taxes, <laughs> get a couple years down the road. Well, no, actually, no. Hey, wait, you know, I had a yeah. huge loss in twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you got to bring some of that back. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you got too many re- kings. Re- yeah, I got too many kings. What's a fresh? <laughs> yeah, we got to switch this around. <laughs> but yeah, they they just seem like that. You know, we never have to close a year. To me, if you're going to report, then you should say okay. This is it for 2020. We're never changing these numbers again. That's Back to my is. different forms of accounting. Yep. Yeah. You can you can be cr- very creative there. Yeah. Uh-huh. Those guys are way better artists painting a picture than than actual artists. Yep. It's yeah. the damn accountants and the damn lawyers that are just <laughs> ruining this yeah. country. <laughs> yep. Too many numbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, shifting gears, you know, talking about government BS and whatnot. What do you think about the deal in Ukraine? So I hear, you know, Putin's bringing in the the general who's known to just level cities. I, I thought this war, I, honest to God, when this whole thing started, and I think I might have even said it on a podcast, I thought it was going to be short and sweet. I thought Putin was going to roll right through Ukraine. Yeah. It was going to be over, and I was dead wrong. So this thing could potentially drag out. I seen, I seen Ukraine suck a Russian warship today it's looking like it could drag out for a while you know there for for a little bit i'm like well doesn't look like they're gonna get a lot planted and then there was kind of some some guys on on social media like oh we're gonna get it planted it's not gonna be a big deal and then the market kind of dipped as a result of that and now it's kind of swung back the other way so i don't know the problem with all that is like could you believe anything the russians tell you for the last 40 years right or any not. of the media or for any that of the matter. media for that matter I mean, yes i guess to me when you bomb a port city let's just say right now the new orleans got bombed and, yeah. and wiped out a bunch of the ports you don't rebuild that overnight Mm-mm. you know that that's yeah. logistically impossible so i i just don't think that any way you cut the mustard Ukraine is going to be exporting very much grain this year. You wouldn't I, think I so. I don't see whether whether or not they even get it planted. Let's say, that, let's say they get it all planted. I still don't see how you could even get it exported if you did get it planted. I mean, they're from what we know, they're on the bare bones of technology anyway right. and barely getting it done as it was. So you would think if they have to defend their farm with a rifle, like they ain't got time to plant. But – who really knows? Like, right. we don't know. And the media tells us some some BS that, that may or may not be true. So, I mean, hell, we can't depend on the media to, to report anything in our own country, let alone over there. Not yeah. like they're letting reporters in. Yeah. You know? I, I do think Russia, on a world standpoint, tipped their hand a little too far, you know, because they were sort of leading the world to believe that they're the, you know, the the third superpower in charge mm-hmm. and we can do anything. And it's like, okay, you it's been a struggle to even get halfway across Ukraine. 
They're and a paper tiger. In my I, I think they are. They're a paper tiger. The, the Russians don't concern me. No. They're, they've got vintage shit that wasn't that good when it was new. It's just old now. I mean, cripes. They'd be better off with a fleet of 4020s and, you know, yeah. some shotguns. Right. From what I've seen of their tanks and their and right. their other armament, like, they're, it's not that good. Most and the, and then you throw run. in the the uh, uh, cultural exchange. You know, a lot yeah. of the if if the media is telling us right, that a lot of the Russian soldiers didn't really want to be there to start with, and they don't know what they're fighting for. They don't know who they're fighting. They, they yeah. don't know why they're fighting. You know, basically, I think they're fighting Ukraine, going more towards the Western society. You know, but they were told they were fighting the Nazis. Yeah, because you know, they don't know any better. Yeah, you know, and I don't know what to think on Ukraine either. You know. It's obviously a shady place. I mean, look what mm-hmm. our own president and his son, the kind of dealings that they've had there, the Clintons, everybody yeah. else. You know, everybody wants to stick up for Ukraine, and I'm not saying they shouldn't. I, you know, this country was attacked out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, I, I understand that part of it, but don't let on like Ukraine's just this big innocent guy in the room that just yeah. got, you know, picked on for no reason. Yeah. I mean, They're not Switzerland. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of corruption in that country. To, Absolutely. Yeah, you know, and then there's water rights in there. You know, do they have this dam where they shut the water off to Crimea and all this stuff? Like, we don't know. Like, the only things we b- little bit know about that whole part of the world are from some James Bond movies. Yeah. Like, you don't get any real information from any of that stuff. You barely know the locations, et cetera, et cetera. Like, we have a hard enough time keeping track of what's going on in Iowa, Missouri, Indiana yeah. from our location let alone what's going on in Russia and Ukraine. Like it, it, it's all, it's all what they want us to hear. Yeah. So and don't you think that's why governments anymore are so much against social media because yeah, now, because, because it travels fast yeah, and you don't have the middleman yeah. in there that gets to skew that the way yes. he wants. You know, I was right there and this is exactly what happened and I'm showing yeah. you a video of it and they're like, well, Hey, whoa, no, we want to yeah. put our narrative. Yeah, on wait that. a minute. We want to, we want to have our guy tell it our way with our video after we've edited it and and done what we want to do to it, you're doing real time. That's no good. We right. got to we got to nip that. And and I guess if you're a firm believer in don't believe anything the media tells you, then why is it? Why are you selective on that? So now when it comes to Ukraine, we're just automatically going to believe anything that's put in front of us. Well, yeah. you just told me two weeks ago don't believe anything the media tells you. Yeah. But now this, well, we got to disregard that here. You know, we got to believe all this. Yeah. And. The funny part is, is a few weeks ago, I was watching one of the early morning ag programs, whether it's Ag Day or, or whatever. I don't, I don't remember which one it was. And they showed a farmer from Ukraine on there. And if you didn't know any better, you would have thought the guy was in Iowa. Yeah. There's these flat black square fields of a newer 8R series John Deere, a big field cultivator on it, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, you didn't have, if, if they would have not told you that you was in Ukraine, just based on the picture, not the guy himself hearing him talk, you've thought you was in the Midwest. So once again, you know, what is farming like over there? Is it great, big, huge fields with modern equipment? Is it not? I, I, I don't know. I, I really I can't know. tell you. I, I mean, yeah, exactly. We don't know. Because and, once and there's again, really no way for us to find out. Right. Like, did, did they cherry pick the one BTO in the area that, that exactly. does have that stuff, but nobody else does? I don't know. My only experience on that is, and it's minimal, is the one friend I have from the Netherlands that has been to, to, to Russia and the Ukraine basically told me if if they ever got roads and technology and tractors none of the rest of the world would farm is that right he's like there's just acres and acres or hectares and hectares of barren shit because they're basically doing it communist style and once they get everything we have here we they won't need here they can do it all It'll probably never turn to that. Like they're probably never going to make that swing and that switch. So, which is good for us, but. And even now, let's say Russia took it all over. Well, to me, that's almost setting it back 30, 40 years in a sense. Yes. The way they do things. So yeah, they're not going to be a a leader in that. Yeah. Yeah. They could take it over, but they're not going to outproduce what the people that are doing it before. Right. From what I've seen. So I don't know. It's just so hard to judge on what's actually happening there because we literally don't know and we really can't find out, you know? Yeah. Like my father-in-law always tells me when it comes to religion, he's like, you know, you, 
just learn your Bible, learn your Bible. Then all these arguments, you've got the facts and the figures. Well, in this instance, I can't get the facts and figures because I have nobody over there that yeah. I can really get can, the information from yeah. in a in a true reliable. fashion, yeah, exactly. in a reliable fashion. Yeah, you know, yeah, it, it makes sense. I mean, you know, look at all the stuff that you know after the Soviet Union went down. I mean, you know, all these nuclear bombs. You know, we didn't have a clue where any of that stuff ended up. With. No. We we don't know if it has been destroyed, if it's still in a stockpile. So we have no clue where this stuff ever went. They don't either. You yeah. know, I had a physics professor in college who was really, really good, in my opinion. And he told me at that time, he's like, you know, we knew where most of their silos were. And most of those got stripped. You know, of course, you got to remember when the Soviet Union went down, they had all the, the Ukraines, all the outlying countries outside of Russia. When they go down, Russia wasn't in control of that anymore, so they were in control of it. Well, they didn't have any money. They needed some ways, so all the all the silos got stripped. It's like they couldn't launch anything from those that they wanted to. Right. Took all the copper. They, I mean, copper, the wiring, they, they stole everything out of them. They probably weren't that great to begin with, and they got stripped out. He's like, the mobile ones, they knew round about how many they had. A lot of those were missing... Not really sure, but like the backpack ones at that time was was his concern. He's like, they had thousands of those. No idea where they went, how many they had, where they went. You know, have you ever seen the movie Lord of War? Yep, Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage, great movie. Prime example, like that wasn't nuclear stuff, but that's, you know, stockpiles and stockpiles and stockpiles. They were just selling it off. Just selling it off to the high bidder to some third world shit box in Africa. Because they had the money and they wanted the money. So here you go. We got 500,000 AK-47s. Here you go. Yep. You know, and the nuclear stuff probably wasn't that much different than that. But but what do you, how do you, how much, how much of that do you believe? Like, right. some of it happened, but you don't, they don't know. We don't know. Nobody, you know, they don't have a USDA that's keeping track of all that stuff. Yeah. So I can't help but believe if a lot of the backpack nukes or whatever got away from Russia I can't believe it didn't end up in the hands of whether it's ISIS, you know, one of the terrorist organizations that absolutely hates America and hasn't been detonated here. I, I find that hard to believe that it wouldn't have happened by now, either here or Israel, one or the other. Or anywhere, really. I mean, yeah. you can take two pieces of, of weapons-grade uranium, whack them together, and level a city bigger than our hometown. Yeah. You know? You're, yeah, you're going to die doing it, but that doesn't seem to bother those people. You would have thought some of that would have happened. Yeah, you know, if they didn't die of radiation first and transport, et cetera, et cetera. But I mean, literally, you just whack them together. Like, yeah, you don't have to have a, this magical reaction, you know, for a grand scale Hiroshima Nagasaki deal. You can take down a small area with with way less than that. But fortunately for the world, that none of that really has happened. Yeah, but. And, and that's why I have a hard time believing that a lot of that got out of the country because I think ISIS or anybody would have done that the minute that they oh, got the opportunity. Absolutely. Or, here's the other caveat, does any of it work to begin with? Like, exactly. did, they, did they even have it to begin with? Because they're a master of, of media manipulation. Yeah. You know, like I said, the only thing we know about Russia is what the Russians wanted to tell us. Right. You know? The whole it, thing's a big bluffing game, truthfully. I mean, absolutely. Really I mean, it was way easier for them to send spies here than it was for us to send spies there. Yeah. You know, English is probably easier to learn in Russian from what I've gathered. You know, okay, let's say, and I don't know all the demographics of Russia, but let's say half of our CIA agents are some ethnicity other than white. Well, they're automatically out. Mm-hmm. You're not sending them to Russia Yeah, from what I've seen. Like, you know, and we're not doing, you know, you've seen the show, the Americans or whatever, where they mimic American life or whatever. We're probably not mimicking Russia, life, Russian life and sending agents over there because we don't know anything about them. Yeah. Like we have, how we're going to mimic it. We don't know anything about it, you know? So, or we know very little about it. So it's harder for us to mimic that and send people over there. Like I said, half your agents are out from the get go through no fault of their own. I'm not knocking them for it. No. It's just, it's just, just, the, reality. just, the, just the reality of Russia. Like, yeah. And that's the way it is. It'd be like dropping you or I in China and be like, yeah, I'm a native to China. It's like, well, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, don't, I don't think you are. Yeah. <laughs> I beg to differ here. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I have a hard time believing anything that comes out of that part of the world because, well, they only tell us what they want us to hear. Yeah. So I don't know. 
it uh sadly we probably get more reliable information out of the out of the middle east and you know whatnot than we do out of, of the russian area yeah and i i don't know i'm like you i do, i don't I don't know what to believe. You know, they, they talk about now you bringing this new general in that's, you know, known because they call him what, like the, the butch, something when the, this deal in Syria yeah, just a couple something. years ago, I don't remember the exact name they gave him. You know, yeah. he's basically he has a reputation for just going in, just leveling entire cities, you know, yeah. but once again, is this a scare tactic, you know, on the world front? I mean, is he really going to do it? You know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. And is there shit good enough to do it? I mean, we have a hard time getting parts for a John Deere here. Yeah. In today's standards, so how are they getting them there? You know, if they're farming the whole that area with Belarusas, good luck. Knock yourselves out. And and virtually any company in America that has any merit or any size to it has already announced, you know, we're no longer shipping parts, mm-hmm. nothing over there. I mean, we've seen how quick COVID crippled things here. Yes. And the shit's made 150 miles north of us. Yeah, exactly. So I can't imagine halfway around the world. I mean, that's going to yeah. eat into that pretty quick. And you I don't, don't care if it's so. parts for a tank or a John Deere tractor, whatever. Whatever it is, yeah. So, yeah, it makes you wonder, you know, could this be the next Vietnam, Afghanistan that drags on for 20 years? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, the Ukraines are far from innocent. I mean, I don't like what's happening to them, and I'm not rooting for Putin by any means, but by the same token... The liberal media tells me I should be 100% against Putin, which tells me that, yeah, well, maybe he ain't all that bad because that's exactly because they're usually full of shit. So I, I talked to Red Power Stew on the phone the other night. We got to talking about this that you know I learned a long time ago when the government or the media says that you need to be looking left, then you better be looking to the right. Yeah, exactly. And so, so I really don't know. I am truly stuck in this because yes. I don't know enough about the situation to comment either way. I really don't. The, the frustrating part for me is like normally when you're in this situation. You can research it and, and dig your way out. There's no, there's no place to research this and dig your way out. No, you know where are you gonna go? The internet, newsflash, they're they're not putting anything on there that they don't want you to know. So it, it's hard to find the facts, figures, and whatever to, to get dig your way through that. And I will give credit where credit is due. I cannot stand Joe Biden. I mean, I I despise that man, but he has not been lured into this war, and I don't think it's our war to fight. At this point, I really don't think we need to be getting involved in this. I hate it for the people. And that's what sucks about wars. It's two leaders of countries having a dick measuring contest, and you get a bunch of innocent civilians caught up in yeah. the middle of it and get killed. And I, that's what sucks. But right now, this is not our war to fight, and I firmly believe that. And maybe people are going to get pissed, but I, I just we can't police the entire world. I'm done with that shit. Yeah, policing the entire world gets to be a, a taxing task that you – it, it's you can't pull off, but yeah, he hasn't drug it into it. But the same token, he sent millions and millions of dollars of tax money over there. Was that to repay somebody for a favor that they yeah. did him years ago? Yeah. So in a sense, we are involved. I, I mean, mean, our tax dollars physical. are going yeah, over there. We're not physically so, involved, but yeah. You, you know, so on the way home from my from we were podcasting here the other day. I come across a great radio program on World War II. And I cannot, for the life of me, remember the name, and I cannot find I know the station I was listening to, but I can't find I sat in the truck for 20 minutes when I got home. Really? And it was late. But I sat there anyway, like a moron, because World War II intrigues me. And, and so they were talking about different things on that. And one of them was, originally, Czechoslovakia, you know, the Nazis wanted to go into that. Well, part of Czechoslovakia wanted to, wanted to be part of the Third Reich. A large percent of their, percentage of their population wanted to be part of the Third Reich, but the other part didn't, and they were easily defendable for Britain and France because they had forts, et cetera, set up, and they were on the correct side for them to back up, but they didn't do it. Well, Hitler enters Poland. Well, part of the Polish people wanted to be part of the Third Reich because it sounds like it's going to be a good deal. The media is telling you this thing's going to, this is the right to last a thousand years. Well, I want to be part of that. Yep. I don't want to be on the other side of it. If these guys are going to rule the world, I want to be part of the people that are ruling the world. But Poland was on the other side. They can't back them if they wanted to. They had no forts, et cetera. They couldn't back them if they wanted to. They just got to let them take it. And then it develops into World War II and, and turns into a be, a be a big deal. And I would like to, to have caught more of that guy's deal. It went to commercial. It was late. I said to heck with it. 
I'll look it up tomorrow. I cannot find it for the life of me. You ought to Google that radio station and like Central Illinois, and you could probably get the programming schedule and see what it was. And I then tried. Start. I know what station it was, but I could not get the programming schedule. It was not retroactive, so I could only really? find what they were playing going forward. I'll try it again here yeah. soon and see if I can figure it out. But that being said, like you said, some small events end up turning into a big deal with a lot of little known facts to us. You know, all we know is Nazis bad. We're going to help Britain and France out because France has been taken over and the Britain or British are trying to save the world. So we're going to back them. I you would know? love to be able to go back and listen to or read whether it's newspapers, get the general feel of the United States. And let's see, we were attacked in 41. So stretch it out to like 42 or 43 because for all the years we were in Iraq, Afghanistan, whatever, you always had a division, even here at home. You know, a lot of people was for the war. Yep. Several people wasn't. Did we have that in World War II? Because, you know, we're, we're led to believe in the media, the documentaries you watch now, in school, that it's like 99.999% of the country was, hell yes, you know, we're Americans, we're going to win this war. But you can't tell me there wasn't a percentage of people in there that are like, you know, no, or they, they even thought Germany was right. You know, I, I don't know. The, so here's the thing. At the end of the day, winners tell history, not the losers. So if you win, you can tell it any way you want. Exactly. And here's the other caveat to that. The United States is based up based off of a lot of German heritage. Almost no Russian heritage. So we didn't give really two shits on the Eastern Front. They can blow themselves to smithereens. We can give two shits about that. That's Germans fighting Russians. Yeah. Knock yourselves out. But when we want to free the Germans, we want to help the poor German people or whatever, we've got some French, we've got some British. We don't have shit for Russians at that time. Mm -hmm. Probably more than I think of, but not a not a vocal factor right. of, of population. Not enough to make any difference. So they can do whatever they want. We don't care. But if we lose World War II, history gets written drastically different. If the if the Germans win, well, history gets told way different. You know, yeah. E even if they prolong it for ten more years, it gets told way different. So it's so hard to say what what's fact versus fiction. And the hard part as an American, in my opinion, is I love the troops. I love the U.S. military. I don't care if they're fighting the Salvation Army in front of a Walmart or if they're fighting the, in Afghanistan or if they're fighting the Germans, the Russians, whoever they're fighting. I'm going to back the U.S. military 100% because you'll never find a bigger patriot than me when it comes to supporting the U.S. military. Does that mean we're always 100% on the right side of where we need to be? To depends me, that, on, depends that falls on, you, on the commander-in-chief. Exactly, and some of yeah. that depends on how you, who you want to believe and how the story is told to us. Like, yeah. it, it was easy to get on board against Hitler, right? Mm -hmm. We're going after Hitler. We partnered with Stalin, who was 10 times worse than Adolf Hitler ever thought about being on yeah. his worst day. On his most coked-out cocaine injection in the eye day, he was a pawn in the game of Stalin. Stalin was smart enough to get Churchill and FDR to back him to take on this supposed bad guy who was a bad guy, but he's 10 times worse. Right. You know, that's like me beating the shit out of you, three of your buddies and five of your other buddies back me. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't even make any sense. Yeah, basically, Stalin knew that once Hitler got everything done over here on the Western Front, then he's headed east. Yes. And now we're going to lose Russia, so i yeah. got to get these guys on board so he don't take my country. Exactly. We're going to get these guys to fight the war for me. Yeah. You know, and Churchill and Stalin made some backdoor deals because Left Yard was a dipshit. So the, all those backdoor deals happened on the sidelines. Then the Russians steal a bunch of our shit after the fact, and we're dumb enough. We gave them a bunch of stuff after World War II, let them have yeah. part of Germany. How'd you like to be the Polish people? Um, yeah, the war was started because we got invaded. And then, uh, yeah, we were going to be part of Germany, which is the most technologically advanced country in the world. And then what'd you do with us in the end? Oh, yeah, you gave us to the Russians. Yeah. Well, thanks a freaking lot. Yeah. You just set us yeah. back a hundred yeah. years. Yeah. And now we're under we, communism. We were, we were doing okay. The Germans were taking us over. It sucks. But we're part of Germany now. Oh, now you gave us to the Russians. It's like living in 1846. Yeah. Thanks a freaking million. You might as well film 1883 with Tim McGraw then because yeah. that's what the freak they were living. Yep. You know? I mean, do the? it always comes back to the question, do the means justify the ends? You know, and that's a tough question. Like, 
Generally, they don't. Two wrongs don't make a right. You know, I, that, that's my bitch with World War II is we, we literally backed the most evil person in the history of the world. Yeah. You know, you'll never convince me that Joseph Stalin was a good person on any no. level. Never. On, on, on any level. Because look what know? happened the minute that the World War II ended. Then yeah. we're in a pissing match with Russia. Exactly. I mean, I mean Hitler was a shitbag. I agree. Mm -hmm. But his people were ten times better off than Stalin's ever thought about being before the war, during the war, or after the war. Yep. I mean, they, they weren't good to the fall of the Soviet Union, it's, and they still weren't great. It's like they always said, and, and this is going to sound worse than what I mean it. I, I think the atrocities that Hitler and all of them committed are, are just unfathomable whether you know jewish people whatever i mean i'm not i'm not for any of that but is what i'm getting at is hitler targeted one group of people the jews yeah. he wanted to wipe off the face of the earth but you know we've often talked that when it comes to world war ii you know, everybody's like well how are the the russians advancing so fast he didn't give a shit you he just keep lining it. up more russians you just line them up they don't even have to have a rifle no. you can pick one up on your way exactly you yeah. just keep sending more people until the germans run out of ammo and then after they run out of ammo from shooting all the russians then we'll just overtake them yeah and exactly they, they did, and he didn't care who you were, what you were, whatever. Just send yep. people. I, I read a book on that at one time. Ike, God bless him, great president, great commander, or, you know, great general, et cetera, asked a Russian general, how are you guys getting through these German lines? And he's like, oh, it's real easy. You just send a shitload of people up the middle. He's like, what do you do then? He's like, oh, they get slaughtered. He's like, then you send a shitload more people up the middle. He's like, they get slaughtered too. He's like, but by that third wave, they're out of shit to shoot at you, and you just send the third wave. They they march through right, right real easy. Yeah. And Ike's like, eh, we're going to have to find a better plan than that. We don't have a shitload of people just to send slaughtered right. through the middle. Like, we, we like our people. Right. We're not going to send them all through the middle. We're going to have to flank them somehow or whatnot. We're going to have to come up with a better strategy. And the Russian guy's like, ah, shit, we don't even like our guys. We'll just send them up the middle. Exactly. We don't care. Right. You know? And that's how Stalin operated. And that's how Stalin operated. And, and, and we're not even talking killing people just from the standpoint of, in a sense, sending your own troops to their own death. I mean, it was... I mean, they, he done shit way worse than Hitler. He, as far he killed as, off 20 million people before World War II started. Yeah. From what I remember. He yeah. killed off more people before the war than the war actually killed. Yeah. You know, but we backed him. Yep. So, are, are, are we lily white and innocent in that deal? Uh, and, and it all comes back to, like we said, with your media. FDR was one of the worst presidents yes, to ever sit in the white house yep. but any history book or any school you go to paint is going to see his praise him as a saint and that guy was a piece of shit, shit. yeah yep. absolutely useless yep. and, and honest to god about 90 percent of the taxes you're paying today started under fdr, FDR. yep if they whether, didn't start under him woodrow wilson got him rolling before exactly. that. exactly yeah. whether it's social was security coincidentally all in world war one exactly yeah doing another great job Yep, so for some of you younger listeners who who maybe don't really have a dog in the fight, don't really care, but you remember that your teachers always taught you that FDR was a good president, you better go research that on your own because that guy was a piece of yeah. shit. Who allegedly me. brought electricity to the country, so that yeah. makes him a good guy. Well, research that. You paid for that. Right. He didn't do it with his money. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. And actually, if you ever go back and watch Ken Burns' deal on the Roosevelt's, where and it, and it, it was like an eight- or ten-part series, and it cut kept going back and forth contrasting Teddy Roosevelt to FDR. Yeah. FDR was a weird son of a bitch. Yes, he was. His mother gave him a bath, not just put him in the tub, gave him a fucking bath till he was like nine years old. Yeah. It's that, like, and that pretty much tells you all you need to know about it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The, the guy was fucking weird. And maybe that wasn't his fault, but still weird. Yeah. He, so, it but, just goes back to prove my theory that there's like four families that run this country and have exactly 150 years you know the the powers have been in play and and they pull the they pull the pawn strings you know they're just look, bouncing us look up at down. you and i just from being born you know in the 79 and 80 you know so we had reagan then we went to bush and then clinton then another bush yeah and then oh but you know what i mean but when you dig behind the scenes had hillary got elected yeah. you know we'd have went bush clinton but you know, you just kept yeah. tossing it back and forth and yeah. and it just yeah, they always... It, it all comes back to Distinguished Gentleman to me, the movie, which most of you younger guys haven't probably ever seen, but go back and watch one of Eddie Murphy's finest movies, Distinguished Gentleman. With all this money coming in from both sides, how's anything get done? That's the beauty of the system, son. Nobody, Nothing ever does. Yep. And it's true. They exactly. never solve any problems. They just throw money one way, throw money the other way. All the people at the top get paid. Life goes on. Yep. 
You know, when it comes down to hardcore beliefs by the average American citizen, you could do all that for what? A sixth of the U.S. budget Mm -hmm. to provide what they actually want. Good roads, strong military. Outside of that, I don't know if we need the rest of the shit. But there, there is tax for this, fee for that, all this shit that that they can find a way to suck money out of your pocket. I've I've to told Kevin something with me and him being in this transition period where he's quitting farming and yeah. I'm starting farming. You know, that's all we ever hear about from all this horse shit is the beginning farmer programs. Blah blah blah. Yeah, they need an ending farmer program. Yeah, you want to take it up the ass? Get out of farming. farming. Yeah, not get hit. Get out of farming, and you're going to get fucked blind. Yes. And no, I don't well, think that's right. No, it's not. No, it's not. Now there, <laughs> that yeah, that is a whole other subject. But yes, you're right. There, there's no good way to get out. Like you farm your whole life for your farm sale, and then you don't get to keep any of that either. Yeah, exactly. So. And and you see all this, and this is how stupid and removed a lot of the American people are. They're like, well, if you don't like farming, well, then you just need to quit and go down and get a factory job. You don't realize that. So let's say a guy gets beat down enough where he's not really making any money, but yet he owns half a million dollars worth of machinery. Okay, so yeah, I'll use your theory. Yeah, so now I just gave up half of my $500,000 worth of machinery that was bought and paid for in fucking taxes. The government didn't do nothing to help produce any of this. I I know a guy here just recently got out of his his business, small town business, not, you know, not a multi-million dollar business, just just a small town mom and pop business. Sold some of it at an auction, sold the the building, et cetera, off to another guy. He might as well just walked away. Instead of selling any of it, he might as well just turn the key off on on the power, went home, and not sold a thing. Taxes took it all. Yep. He didn't end up with a free clear dime. Yep. Didn't end up with anything. Now part of that is probably poor tax planning. Right. Probably, but but at the end of the day, he's got nothing to show for selling all that stuff off. Like he'd have been better off just to let it grow up in weeds and walk away. I want to know where the government gets off. So let's let's say your pickup out in the driveway. I have no idea what you paid for it. Let's say you paid $20,000 for it. And you're like, you know what? I'm tired of this pickup. I don't need the money. So Tony, I want to sell that truck to you for a hundred bucks. Yep. That's your pickup. You own it free and clear. You should be able to do that. But according to the IRS, you can't do you that. You can't do that. You have to sell it for X amount of dollars minimum. Yeah. Well, doesn't, make, doesn't make much sense, does it? Does that sound like freedom to you? I should no. be free to sell that truck for whatever I want to sell it for. It is mine because, to me, are, does the IRS go back and audit auctions? Let's pretend tomorrow that you had a farm auction. Wasn't a real big auction, but had some machinery on it, and you're going to have it on December 22nd. And that day, it comes a blizzard like you couldn't believe. We get three feet of snow, 80-mile-an-hour winds, and it's a fucking train wreck. But they said, nope, we're having it today. And I'm the only guy who shows up, and I give $50,000 for your $150,000 tractor because I was the only guy there bidding on it. Yeah. How does that work? Yeah. I mean, seriously, because granted, if... If we're father and son, you technically can't do that. But when I bought it on an auction, are they going back and checking that? Because yeah. how does that work? Because apparently that that's an okay sale. That's an okay sale. But if you sell it to me on the cheap and we're related, then right. it's a bigger deal. So if I want to unwind farming, so I just have an auction, but I choose not to advertise my auction to anybody but my son, and he buys it on my auction with an auctioneer yeah. present, is that legal? I don't know. I'm I don't just know. asking. I don't know. How does this work? The other thing is, okay, let's say let's say you buy this truck new and you pay tax on it. When I buy it used, why do I have to pay tax on it? You've already paid tax on it. Yeah. And then I buy it and then I sell it and that guy pays tax on it and the guy after him pays tax on it and that vehicle just gets, keeps getting tax paid on it. Why? Exactly. It already had tax paid on it once. Yeah. My thing is with the government, if the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can get by with 10%, why can't the U.S. government? Right. Flat tax at 10%, call it a day. Yep. 10% sales tax, 10% income tax, call it a day. If you can't get by on that, maybe you're spending too much money. Yep. You know? I don't know. We're probably not going to reform the tax code on here, but by gosh, we ought to be able to. Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, and I guess the flip side, I do understand a little bit, like on the inheritance tax, I understand the theory behind it because that's why people fled Europe to come to this country. They're like, it, it got so far out of hand that only the rich people could own land. Could own land because they just kept passing on a generation, yeah. you know. And 
if your son inherits 500 acres and my son inherits nothing, yeah. well, guess who's got the upper hand? Yeah. But now, once again, it's got so far out of control that they all use the loopholes, yeah. and then we all still have to pay the tax, and then they still get bigger, and we all get smaller. So yeah. we're doing nothing now. We're doing nothing. Yeah. It's funny. It hasn't stopped the big companies from getting bigger. No. We're getting less and less small companies and more and more big companies every day, so it ain't working. Right. You know. I just want to get to the point in life where I'm too big to fail. Yeah, there you because go. That, there you, know, you go. That seems to be the hot topic. That yeah, you know, it's funny. Not that many years ago, there was companies that were way bigger. You take International Harvester, Alice Chalmers. All those companies were way bigger or made a way a way bigger variety of products. I guess and it was a bigger impact on the economy. I think they it, actually produce something with workers versus a yeah. trader in an office with shit on piece of paper that could be burnt tomorrow and mean nothing exactly it didn't mean anything they didn't make anything they didn't do anything right you know they they were fine to go down in flames but you know company abc yeah lehman yeah. brothers or whatever yeah. you know we got to save them yeah we'll, they're, they're they're too big to fail well lehman brothers is the only one that didn't get saved yeah you know they exactly. saved all they saved all the rest of them you know just because they went down first you right. know you never want to be the first to fail i guess which it still makes you wonder on that. Who had money where? Yeah, you know, who had did, money where? Yeah. Why did they mysteriously did, go down? Yeah, did any politicians have any money in Lehman Brothers? I'm going to yeah. go with no. Yeah. Not large sums anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's funny how all that plays out to the to the uh, powers that be's hands. Yep. You know, as far as I'm concerned, if you're a high-ranking government official, you can't buy or sell stocks at all. Mm-mm. Zero. Zilch. Nada. Yeah, we're not talking blind trust. We're not talking whatever. We're talking from the day you take office to the day you die. You're, yeah. you're ineligible from yeah. that on. You're done. Ever. You're done. You are fixed on a $60,000 a year income, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. You that's can't, it. You can't buy all that shit because you know they're making decisions based on that. Why exactly. wouldn't you? You know? Exactly. Yeah. They hold all the cards and get to make all the decisions with yeah. no ramifications. Yeah. Yeah. You let me deal you blackjack where I can look at all the cards before I deal them out. Yeah. You're not going to win very many hands. Right. Yeah. And that's why I just sit back and laugh. Now that I've rejoined Facebook, I see it locally. You know, I have to tell you the corrupt shit going on in this county. Uh-oh. We've all seen it a hundred times. And you still to this day have these black and white politics of Democrats here, Republicans here, and the whole goddamn mess is all nothing but the good old boys club. Don't matter which side of the aisle they're on, yeah. you're getting fleeced by all of them and they're, they're all laughing together. all the way to the bank. All in it together. And so I'm just telling you right now, when you're voting that, oh, the Republicans are going to save us, well, they didn't do shit when Trump was in office, did they? Did you see Mitch McConnell come to anybody's rescue? No. Nope. Think of what they could have done. Nope. Had all the power set right there and didn't do a well, goddamn Tony, thing. Tony, they thought that Russian thing was real, so they yeah. couldn't do anything. They're going to have to yeah. rewrite it afterwards. Wouldn't you have taken advantage of it? And if it got rolled back after that, okay. Yeah. Nope, didn't do any of it because they're all in it together because they, they've been in there too long. At exactly. Least, at least with term limits, they'd have to pay off new people. Yep. You know, but it ain't going to happen. Hell no. They're gonna never going to vote themselves term limits. Why would you? Why would you vote yourself out of a job, a pension, yeah. great health care, et cetera? They're not going to vote themselves Hell out of no, that. Hell no, they ain't. Until we, until we tell them that's what it's going to be, they're never going to do it. I seen an excellent TikTok today, and it was uh, a guy talking about how schools – never taught the Declaration of Independence. They taught you that it was there. You know, we had the Declaration of Independence. We're going to skim over that really fast and get right into the Constitution and all this other stuff. Yeah. And he talked about it for two reasons. Is because, A, the Declaration of Independence mentions God numerous times. But then he also really emphasized on the fact that you as an American, it is not your right, it is your duty to overthrow a tyrannical government. Yeah. That is out of control, i.e. what we have today. Yeah. And basically, when you read the Declaration of Independence and start going down through it, it's like, okay, well, that's happening today, and that, and that, and that, and that, and that. And then here yeah. at the bottom, it says, well, hell, I'm supposed to overthrow them. And yeah. that's why they don't want people that's to read it. Say. They don't want the younger generation to read that. Yes. That's and there's exactly probably something right. to that. Oh, I'm sure there is. Yeah. Yeah, they don't want you to know because they don't want you to act on it. You know, it's like the Second Amendment ar- argument. That doesn't have anything to do with hunting deer. Mm -mm. That has to do with keeping a government from oppressing you. Right. I mean, you can skew it any way you want, but that's what it's for. If we went out tomorrow and said, okay, here's the deal, guys. If you're going to be on social media to express your free speech and all your other stuff, you're going to have to fill out this paperwork. You have to have a background check. You're going to have to get this special card. You got to renew every few years. You have to do all this other shit just so you can express your opinion. Yeah. They'd be up in arms about it. 
Yeah. But the Second For Amendment. For a little bit, maybe. Well, yeah. Yeah. But the Second Amendment, then it was like, well, that ain't no big deal. Yeah. Even though it's just as guaranteed as your right to free speech. Yes. As far as that goes, well, yeah, you can pay all that. Well, nobody really needs a gun. I mean, yeah, you live you in New York City, that. you don't yeah. need a gun. No. You can do the gun. Do you really need free speech, Tony? You got Facebook and stuff like yeah. you can see some stuff. You post some stuff. You don't really need it. Yeah. yeah. It's just like the same people that are championing championing now for the Ukrainians. Oh, isn't it so great that that 13 year old girl's fighting for her freedom or whatever? I'm like, two days ago, you were pissing and moaning because me as a 40 some year old man didn't want to wear a mask and expressing my freedom. Yeah. And I was an asshole, yeah. but, but if she's doing another country, well then it's, then it's magical as she's defending her freedom, yeah. but you were more than willing to give yours up. Yeah. Not that long ago. Yeah. You know, I, I sat back and laughed every time I read through social media on Facebook. And that's why the only reason I've got on there is to just screw with everybody and see how fast I can get kicked off because I don't, I don't care anymore. I truly don't. But it's funny how people will pull and just jump on this Ukraine deal immediately. Oh, oh yeah. we got to pull for Ukraine, but our own country is so divided yeah. that, well, you didn't wear a mask. So get the fuck off my property. I'm never yeah. talking to you again. Yeah. You know, th- this country could be overtaken so easy be- due to the division in this country that yeah. it's not even funny. Yep. Yeah. It is absolutely mind-boggling. Yes, it wouldn't take much. It wouldn't. It wouldn't take nothing. No, it wouldn't take much. And maybe that's the ultimate setup. I don't know. Well, I think that's part of it. That but, way they can switch us to one world government, et cetera, which is a whole other topic for another time. And Oh, for sure. We, we try to stay out of the politics a little bit, even though we, we dive off into it occasionally. And if people just do it our way, we could solve it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, it's a mess, and it's funny how, until social media, you lived in a bubble that was the size of a dime. Yeah. And then when you get social media, whether it's Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, take your pick, and that whole bubble just explodes, and you're like, yes. whoa. Now we're all of a sudden concerned about shit that's going on 3,000 miles away. Right. Yeah. But, but even to take that a step farther is, it's like, okay, before you'd catch some stuff every now and again about these wackos in California and you're like, okay, yeah. that's 10 people that feel that way, but it made the nightly news big deal. You get social media and you're like, holy fuck, this is like a wildfire. It's way more than 10 people. Yeah. It's like 10 million. And it's like, how do you, but, I want to know it's why also the squeaky wheel gets the grease that's, too. That's exactly what I was getting ready to say. Why does the smallest voice always get the most say in everything? Because they they have the most time to, to piss and moan. You know, the, the average American working man or woman, because there's only two, man or woman, the rest of you genders, I don't know. The letter people. Yeah, the letter people. You guys, I don't know. You need to go to the bathroom and examine yourself. But that's a whole other topic. But the rest of the people are too busy doing work to worry about that shit. I don't have time to protest. My, my kids need to eat. My wife needs you know, mm-hmm. tires on a car. Like I ain't got time to be out protesting dumb shit. I agree. And that's why guys like you and I don't sit on County boards and all this yeah, exactly. shit. It's like, we don't have time to do it. I'm not, t- I'm not, I refuse to go to anything that requires meetings. Right. I, that's, I'm my standard, right. that's my standard policy. More. If you want help doing whatever it is, whatever committee you're on, if I like that cause, you call me up, I will help you 100% do whatever you want to do. Right. But I refuse to go to meetings. Meetings are where people compromise on their values and dumb people are allowed to speak without being told that's a stupid fucking idea. Pull your head out of your ass and go home. I agree. You're, I'm just, you're too I'm fucking like, dumb to, to speak again. Don't do it again. And I that's agree. my problem with, with meetings of any fashion. Once yeah. you get, if I got a standard policy too. If there's more than six people copied on an email, it's probably not worth reading. Yep. It's probably got bullshit in it. And it, we're going to compromise and we're going to, we're going to do compromise is how stuff gets done half assed. Yep. From my personal experience, if you get a group of people in there and we're going to, we're going to pander to this group and pander to that group at the end of the day, that's a shit sandwich where everybody takes a bite. Yep. We're not going to do it right anymore. We're going to do it half assed. I'm yep. just looking for stuff to be done. Right. Me too. I don't go to meetings. I refuse them. I won't go. I, I'm just like Vince Vaughn in old school. We will give nothing back to the community. This much I can promise you. <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> I, 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 I agree. I have no problem helping anybody on any committee. If they if they got work that he's done, my, my standard policy is you need heavy shit picked up and moved around, I'll gladly do it. We're going to re-landscape the church. I'll help come do it. We're going to move tables and chairs to set up for this function. I'll come help do it. You just call me, let me know. 
I will be more than happy to help you at any of that stuff. If we're going to go to a bunch of bullshit meetings and spend nine hours trying to figure out how to do a one hour job. Yeah. That's what I can't we do. Could with have had, we could have had that job done nine right. times. Because I will guarantee you, if you and I had a meeting tomorrow at your shop and we invited 40 people there that we all thought were pretty decent people. Yeah. And we said, okay, guys, we're going to take the duels off this tractor. What are we going to do first? You know, you or I would say, okay, go get the impact gun, get the sockets. Let's start getting ripped off. But you're always going to have that segment of, yep. well, uh, we're going to have to have some WD-40 to put on the threads, yep. and then you're going to have to drive the tractor up on blood. And then we got the safety Nazi that wants to chalk yep. the front tires, even though it's sitting on flat ground. And, yep. Yep, it, and we're going to have 300 of people who just want to try to do yep. it like properly in their mind or whatever. And I, I don't go for that shit. Just get it done. We're going to have an old school guy that wants to use a breaker bar. He's against impacts. Yep. You know, yeah. I, I can't deal with it. And I can't. Then, yeah, I agree 100%. It, uh that, and that's what frustrates me. You find two farmers can get, can get along on anything. Ain't going to happen. No. We're, if there's one group of people in the world that needs a union, it's farmers. And it ain't ever going to happen because you can't get them to agree on anything. Nope. And everything's too cut through. You always have the back door guy. that If, you, if everybody agreed to, hey, we're not going to plant any crops to get the price of corn up this year. Yeah. You're always going to have the one guy that's going to backdoor yeah. everybody. And, and that's <laughs> why big business benefits from that stuff because there's, there's fewer players in the game. Right. Farmers don't make up a large percentage of the population, but tell me how many people are in big oil or big pharma. Yeah. It's less than that. Exactly. You know, the the major players, the the kingpins at the top. Yeah, the, the money you makers. Know. I mean, the movers. It's, yeah, the movers and the shakers are, are the smaller number than that. Yeah. And that's why, like I said, I refuse to I refuse to participate in a bunch of that shit because I just, I don't have the time. Right. I got shit to do. And that, I'm that's, busy. And, you know, luckily it's been a blessing to me to not have to have a factory job or work at a big company. I get to, yeah. you know, work on a farm and, and do things the way I want to. But that's why I don't deal well with those kind of companies. Yeah. Because we got to have six meetings just to talk about yeah. how we're going to move the meeting, how we're going to move the truck across the street. Yes. It's like I could have moved it 19 times in yeah. the amount of time that it took you to email the fact that we're having a meeting. And generally speaking, all the people in that meeting couldn't start the truck and move it anyway. Exactly. To use my dad's term. Educated idiots. Exactly. They can't do it, but they want to tell somebody else how they ought to be doing it. And it just, it infuriates me. All the stuff that I've ever seen, I've never been a part of these groups, but I see it with my own eyes. Every time there's a community function around here, that we're going to use the Lions Club because the Lions Club does a lot around here in both communities. Yep. I see 400 chiefs and two Indians. Yes. It's always the same two people that are busting their ass to do everything they can to make that happen. Yeah. While all the other people are leaned on the counter talking over here, and this guy's on the cell phone, and they didn't do a goddamn thing. But boy, when it comes time for the Volunteer of the Year award, they're the <laughs> first ones in line to get yeah. this stupid fucking award. But they didn't do nothing. Yes, they nothing. they were standing up there to make the decisions, quote unquote, yep. or at least boss people around. No offense to you Native Americans on that two chief. Oh, or, absolutely. Because I'm a Native American I as am well. too. I checked Native I was, American on everything. I was born in America. I'm Native to America. I do, yeah. And people think I'm bullshitting. Every yeah. every document I fill out now, FSA office everywhere, because they legally can't ask. Yeah. Which, I don't know why they would. Look look up the de- definition of Native. That's yeah. to be born somewhere. I was born in America, so I am a Native American. American. That's true. I won't disagree. I won't disagree at all. And people think I'm bullshit when I check Native American and everything. I don't. I honestly check Native American. I was fucking born here. I am a Native American. Why is it only the Pacific Islanders can be Islanders? What about the Atlantic Islanders or the New Islands right, exactly. in the Atlantic? Caribbean. That, I'm a Caribbean Islander. That, that's not even an option. You're either, if you're an Islander, you're from the, from the Pacific. I don't know why it's that way. I don't know. That's a good question. So for you offended <laughs> Atlantic or Caribbean Islanders, yeah. message us and let us know why you don't have a box on right. those tests right well how about the Aleutian islands because doesn't that separate like the bering I, sea and the I, pacific I, that so. might have been a choice on some of those which i always thought was ironic because there's not a lot of those people in our area nothing against them they're probably great people but there wasn't a lot of those that might have been a choice on one or two of those tests yeah interesting yeah. when we were kids we had to take the iowa basic skills test and i always thought the same thing how much skill do you have to have to live in Iowa? Exactly. Apparently, a lot of basic skills. If you remember, literally, the front of that test had cattails on it. So it's it like, did. It, it did. I swear to God, it did. It did so have cattails. It's like, you know, we're not not really getting into too deep of subjects here. we got cattails on the front of our test. 
<laughs> yeah, they, they no longer take the Iowa test, to my knowledge. It's the California Achievement Test. Now, when we were kids, it was the Iowa Test of Basic Skills. Yes. And we just tried to see how many C circles we could fill out all the way through that dude. Or I did anyway. I didn't give two shits about it. I tried on them. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I've had this discussion with my kids. But, yeah, I always tried on them. I want to know. I want to know where I stand against the Iowans. Iowegians, where, where are they? I don't, I don't know. Were, uh, they, were they the standard on that? Did I test everybody in Iowa and then based everybody? If you were the 94th percentile, were that, did that mean you were 94% better than people in Iowa? Right, exactly. Or not, I'm not knocking you people from why, Iowa. Why I did, honestly want to Why know. did Iowa get to set the standard? So yeah, if you're listening, the standard? like, let's pretend you're from New Mexico. Did you get to take the Illinois test of basic skills? Or the Illinois achievement, you know, where did, where did uh, Illinois fit in here? I mean, I don't think we had a test. I don't think we did either. I think they're like, if you're still willing to live here, we'll take you. You don't have to test <laughs> yeah, to get in. Exactly. Yeah. Iowa must have had a higher standard. Yeah. So if Clint Yeager's listening, we want to know what's going on. Yeah. You Iowa guys. Yeah. Yeah. What's the deal, Clint? You guys still handing out those tests or you guys <laughs> give up on that COVID? COVID. Yeah, exactly. Can't, can't do the yep. test anymore, yep. COVID. Got to free hand out. That, hand that over to California. Those, no way those things are getting graded by a non-dope-smoking <laughs> yeah. hippie. I mean, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the bubble test. Take you four hours to put your name in one of those things. Christ. <laughs> exactly. You feel bad for the kid with a long middle name in those deals. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, uh, yep, always remember, they'd send the letters home, make sure your kid gets a good breakfast yeah, and a good yeah, night's sleep. Yeah. And you're like, it was a fucking SAT. I, I, always, I always tell my kids, I'm like, hey, you can't go to school without a hot meal. Why not? I'm like, I read it on a test. Exactly. If you don't have a hot meal and a good night's sleep, shit, you might as well stay here. Yep. And you didn't want to miss one of those days. You try to make up an Iowa oh, basic yeah. skills test you like that. Yeah. Yep. That, that's a weekend you're not getting back. I, I was disappointed because from my knowledge of Iowa, even as a young kid, what they taught us in social studies, I fully expected the Iowa test of basic skills to be about raising hogs, yeah. a little bit of corn. Yeah, there was nothing on there about no. that. Nope, it was nothing. You know, not once has any of my friends from Iowa asked me about my proficiency in English, my ability to do algebra, yeah. geometry. They never have asked. Nope. I got to think they weren't taking their own test. Exactly. What I can come up with. I, and I'm going to be dumbfounded if people from Iowa comment on this podcast are like, we have no clue what you're talking they, about. They didn't even know they had a exactly. basic skills test. It's a big conspiracy. Now. Do you think the people from Iowa took the Iowa basic skills test? I don't think I'm they gonna, did. I'm going to guess they didn't. In fact, I will bet you a hundred bucks. My mom still has the results because we always got the results yeah, back oh, like, yeah. what, three weeks later, whatever. Yes. And she'd always keep them. So I can prove it to you. I might have to do that on a tech dog. I've got my, <laughs> you might be from third grade and I got my Iowa test of basic skills. My, my kids got theirs back the other day. My daughter was asking me what, 94% men on this one region of this whatever test. So my wife is explaining it to her. And my son, in true fashion, because he may have a little bit of me in him, not a lot, but a little, it's like, psh, 97, walked off. <laughs> he had no idea what it was, but you knew he got a 97, she got a 94, <laughs> beat her, done, out. Mama out. Yes. Threw the mic down, walked off. Uh-huh. So, Mike yeah, he, he might be qualified to live in Iowa. I he don't know. He could be. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe that's what it all was about. You know, they knew all maybe this. It was a screening process. This outbound Illinois migration was coming. And what, it's like, did hey, you ever watch uh, Alias and whatnot? With yes. The, so maybe they were just testing for sleeper agents. I think it know? was. I can't believe I haven't got the call. Uh-huh. I fared fairly well in those tests. I thought I was doing good. Maybe not. I think a lot of my scores were a little bit lacking. I probably should have been in like the... Well, if Mark Thomas is listening to the Kentucky test of basic skills, <laughs> that might be a little more easier down Kentucky, there. I don't know. <laughs> we're education pays. <pace. laughs> yeah. It says right on the sign, we're education pays. <laughs> I'm just kidding all you guys from Kentucky. Yeah, don't get all wound target. up. Don't but get all wound we'll, up. We'll kick it to West Virginia then yeah. if you're going to get all butthurt about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did every state have their own set of basic skills? I don't know. Yeah, we should have been able to pick and choose. Yes, no doubt. I want to take the Alaska test this year. Yeah. Might try to pull a New Mexico yeah, next year. Yeah, why are we why are we testing to get into Iowa? This seems uh, suspicious. So if you took the Illinois test of basic skills in the 80s and 90s, we want to hear from you because yes. I want to know if it existed because yes. I don't know if it did or not. We I didn't take it. We always had to take other states' tests. Yes. 
and truthfully, if you look deep enough into this, it's probably some kind of funding deal. Yeah, you know no I mean? shit. <laughs> if we done better than I, you know, we probably got more federal funding or some. You're bullshit. probably you're probably right. Yeah, it's probably it always comes down to money. Just trace the money to it. It always yeah. comes down to money. You know? Exactly. Somewhere there's a politician who's like, we can screw Iowa out of a bunch of money. They're they're not onto this. We'll take their test. We'll yeah. beat them. We'll take their money. Yep. There was some yeah. politician from out east that's like, look, everybody west of the Mississippi is just dumber and fuck you. Yeah. Keep all the money over here. Yeah. So that's yeah. why. So if you're from Iowa and you feel like you got short short changed on the tax dollars, it's not our fault. Exactly. We excelled on the test. We didn't do it on purpose. Not our fault. <laughs> oh, God. The good old days. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, well, God, we've ran a little long on this. Right? Yeah, we have. We covered a lot of topics. We're like, what, 12 beers deep? Yeah, we have- we, we've offended everybody from Iowa. No, we didn't mean to do that. We did like your tests. That was three or four days off of school, so it was good. We just got tired of filling the bubbles in, yeah. wearing pencils out. Yes, number twos. Actually, you know what? That's probably the conspiracy behind this. Whoever the fuck's making pencils, pencils was made probably the test. pushing the test. You're probably right. That's right. I've always said it's not the cigarettes that kill you. It's the lighters. It's the lighters. It's the butane. <laughs> Bastard gas. Exactly. Hank Hill told me so. <laughs> uh, well, we got to cut it off here. We sure thank you guys for tuning in to the Straightforward Farming Podcast, and we will see you guys next time.